Right. Welcome to today's um, using HPE create programming environment to port and optimize applications to GPUs training. My name is Helen He. Um, so first of all, like I'd like to introduce our speaker, who is the legendary John Levac of HPE, who has had 57 years of experience in HPC, worked as um, Director of Center of Excellence of Cray at Oak Ridge at Lano and helped build uh, making application running efficiently on Titan, top one in 2012, and Jaguar, top one in 20, 2009 of top 500 supercomputers. And before that, he worked at IBM as Director of Advanced Computing Technology Center. John is truly an expert in application tuning and compiler analysis of scientific applications, he has written several books. Um, high Performance Computing, I Guidebook to Fortran, and recently Programming on Hybrid multi minical MPP Systems. Has given numerous presentations and tutorials at conferences, at workshops, and, and also to our DOE labs and to NERSC, especially a lot of them. And John is doing this, his last training of his career life today. <laughs> He's going to retire at the end of 2023 He's now already living in Portugal. So congratulations, John, and to have a great retirement life and enjoy. Thank you. We'll miss you and we're gonna lose lots of, um, it's a big loss for the HPC community that you're not working on the application <laughs> performance tuning anymore and share all your advanced practices with us. So mm -hmm. enjoy his training today. Um, we have NERSC users and also Oak Ridge and Argonne users from, um, joining, so welcome. And thanks for um, Suzanne and, and, Laz, and Yassi at Oak Ridge and, and Argonne, Argonne to announce those to, to, you, to you as well. So some logistics first, everyone is muted and uh, we'd like you to change your Zoom name to first name and last name. You can click the participants and then more next to your name to rename. We have enabled live captions and view full transcripts. So you can turn on captions and you can also um, choose to view transcripts. And if you like to save it, you can. You can toggle captions on and off. And we prefer to use a Google Doc instead of Zoom chat for questions because those are re um, re reserved and not, not going away after Zoom. And also they are threaded, not interleaved as in Zoom chat. Uh, we will make slides available soon. Um, in the month this morning and videos will be available a few days later. We also prepared a survey, so we'd hope we can help us answering some questions after the training to help us um, plan planning future, future trainings better. Thank you. So everyone, if you're a NERSC user, you're already added to the NERSC Train 9 project. Uh, we have nodes reserved, so this helps you to use this project for hands-on. And if you're training, um, a user, you are um, told how to apply for a training account. If you haven't, you can still do it now and it'll be valid to use in about an hour to submit jobs. And those accounts will be valid through December 14. The reservations today are from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And these are some flags that use dash dash reservation and some other flags. The dash Q shared is for everybody to share the four GPUs on the GPU node that since we're only using one GPU for, for the exercises. So um, we're also using one fourth of the CPU cores, which is uh, 32 cores out of 128 on the GPU nodes. So you can use that. And outside of the reservation, you can either use still use GPU shared to request for one GPU, or you can ask for the entire GPU node. You can also submit dash capital C CPU um, to run the CPU only jobs. And so you look with SSH parameter and uh, the exercises are now um, uh, available at the global CFS directory. And you can copy it over, note this last dot to copy the entire directory over. Make sure you use, use Scratch because for the performance tools and uh, Scratch is, is the Luster file system that works better than the, the home directory. And then you CD to the directory, and then the, the exercise are there. There's, there's a readme file there that tells you how to compile and run, and also how to use the reservation stuff. 
uh, there's a setup um, script. You don't just run it. You have to source setup. Then it'll load the pro create, uh, create program environment and you can compile and submit the batch script. There's a run it and there's a run it dot December 7. December 7 uses a reservation. You can use that as a template to run. Um, then on a the slide on how to use the, the Cray H program environment and those tools, you would use PRG and V Cray and load the Pov tours or some other Pov tools, Light, Pov tools, a family of Light uh, modules. And then when you compile, um, this is a suggest a flag to get marked list so that you will see in, in, in the tools the uh, lots of information. And then you would use path build. To use and and to uh, focus on some kind of group, some you can use group of I/O, MPI, OpenMP, I/O, etc., and it'll generate a Michael.exe plus pat. Then you would run this pat directory, uh, di executable, and it'll create a performance uh, files in the directory as well. And lastly, when you're using the tool, it's called review to help you. Um, Coding, inserting directives, um, you would have to generate a program library first using dash HPL flag. And then you can launch review um, using NX. Uh, we, we told everybody to, uh, to, um, to install NX, which would um, expedite, expedite uh, X forwarding. This is a good review, is a GUI tool. You would use the program library generated and your performance data. So here are some links for the useful documentation, the parameter documentation, there's NX documentation, and how to use Pro Tools and review on parameter and uh, training events. And you can see there are used for the past events, you will see the slides and, record and recordings and lots of documentations there. So that's all, thank you. Okay. Um, and I'll pass on to John to start his training for us. I will uh, repeat what okay. is where to access the Google Doc in the chat right now. All right. Can everyone uh, hear me all right? Yes, can hear you and see your slides. Great. Oh, great. So, um, Helen actually approached me um, in Helsinki, where um, CUG was held this year. And there were actually several of us that were giving an application um, or a presentation on um, moving applications to GPUs. And so, we're going to do two parts today. The first part is going to be kind of a high level overview of taking a relatively simple application called Hamino and moving that to um, the GPU. Um, and then the second part is, is really going to be more intensive. Um, the application is Leslie 3D, and it's more difficult. Um, but I think it's very important to, I like both of these applications because they have elements that make your life difficult, which is the standard operating procedure for these computers these days. Okay, so um, so the agenda, uh, basically an introduction, and then I'll go through steps and moving an application to uh, a GPU. Uh, and then start with this simple application. And one of the things I really like to do um, is to first port the application to OpenMP on the node. Um, because you can do a lot of very good 
easy debugging using OpenMP on the node. And then when you move an OpenMP code to the GPU, it's relatively straightforward. Um, and then we're going to get into the real difficulty, which is dealing with data movement. I mean, it's relatively easy to parallelize the code. Um, the problem is really optimizing the data movement. Now, I don't know about your experience, but what we're seeing is that um, unified memory is not really uh, performing uh, that well. And so I will not be using uniform memory. And when you don't use uniform memory, you have a, a added problem with global data, which we'll deal with um, quite a bit by in, during this session. All right, the, here, you gotta have your uh, typical um, marketing slide. Um, so that, okay. There's a couple of questions. What is uniform memory? So there is a option on both NVIDIA and AMD where you can have one single address space. And then as you utilize arrays on the GPU, they're migrated to the GPU. And then as you use them on the CPU, they're migrated back. And so really you have one address space. What we're going to be dealing with tonight, or tonight, today, is basically having two address spaces. And we're going to be moving data between those address spaces. So it's more difficult than uni unified memory. Um, however, um, you know, it's how you get the best efficiency. Uh, there was also another question that appeared and then went away. Um, yes, uh, during this session, we're going to be using Hamino. So if you go into the tutorial apps directory and you go into the Hamino directory, you will see uh, there's a single source file called HaminoPacking.f. Um, and uh, so you can follow along with some of the things we're doing here. Um, another marketing slide. Um, now, we have a lot of tools. Um, I'm not going to be using them all today, but there's um, two most prominent ones are Reveal that Helen mentioned and also Apprentice. Uh, Apprentice really is a visualization tool for um, perf tools outputted generation. Um, and I'll talk about those a little more later on. Okay. Now let's let's talk a little bit about um, directive based programming models. There are a number of ways of putting an application on a GPU. Um, in Fortran, the number of ways is somewhat limited because things like Raja and Cocos and a lot of the C++ meta template approaches do not work with Fortran. So with Fortran, 
really all you have is to code in the assembler. Well, I call it the assembler, but CUDA, um, HIP, um, or SICL, I guess, on, on the IBM system, or OpenMP offload, and uh, NVIDIA and AMD uh, via HPE's compiler support OpenACC. Now, what I'm going to be talking about today is really OpenMP and OpenACC, which are very, very similar. Pretty much anything you can do in OpenMP offload, you can do open in AC uh, and vice versa. Uh, it really turns out that most of the people in Europe are actually using OpenACC and most of the people in the United States are using OpenMP. Now, these are comment line directives. And the great thing is there on both of these approaches, there are language committees that are maintaining the standard and enhancing the standard and the vendors tend to sign up for the standard. Uh, now, of course, you always have the problem where some vendors are ahead of other vendors, and so portability might be somewhat of an issue. Um, now, the other thing is that if you're, you have a situation uh, where you're using directives, but this particular um, uh, looping structure is not running that well, you can drop into CUDA or HIP and call that from your OpenMP or OpenACC program. Um, and there's also a lot of very nice uh, performance uh, measurement tools, um, et cetera. Um, and um, so that's about all I need to say about that. Okay, we're gonna be working with the Himino benchmark. It is a 3D Poisson equation with a 19 point stencil. This is highly memory intensive and memory bound. Now, whenever you have an application that is highly memory intensive, that means that the GPU should do very well because the GPU's uh, memory bandwidth is much higher than the CPU's memory bandwidth. Now, there are various versions of Amino out there. I um, use the Fortran one um, and um, have created both OpenACC and OpenMP offload versions of it. Now, you can uh, vary the size of the problem if you look at the param.h file, um, that can be set up for either doing one up to um, a n by m by l, uh, three-dimensional version. Okay, when you do a profile of Mino, you will find that all the time is spent in this loop. And this is where a stencil is applied to the pressure array. And the updated pressure values are saved to a temporary array work too. Um, also, there is a value called WGOSA, which is computed, which is a reduction function. Um, so it adds a little complication 
to the um, GPU uh, directives. Now, the benchmark is typically set up where it times itself and then it runs this kernel to run in the end number of times to complete a minute. But that's hard to compare different versions if everything runs a minute. And so what we have done in the version, not the version you have, but the version that we use for this presentation is we set the um, kernel to be executed a fixed number of times, which I think is 500 or something like that. Okay, now what actually happens here is an outer loop is performed um, as an iter iteration. And the Jacobi kernel is executed and new values are generated from the old values. And then the array is updated. And then you do a halo region exchange between the neighbors. This is another complication for GPUs because uh, typically the MPI used for halo region exchanges is performed on the host. Um, but we prefer to show you how to avoid the host traffic. And um, I'll pre be presenting that. And then um, you just, you get this control value, which is computed with an all reduce across all the PEs. So that's, that's all there is to this program. And so it's very simple. Okay, and now perf tools light, um, we're gonna be using perf tools light in perf tools light loops. Um, perf tools light is just um, a profiler and it's very simple to use. In fact, Nurse was the one that suggested we have a perf tools light because perf, perf tools all by itself um, requires you to instrument the executable and then after execution run a, um, a data processing uh, app. And um, so perf tools light is what we'll use. All you do is do a module load perf tools light. If you would like to try this in the Hamino directory, uh, feel free to. Um, and then you build the application. And I think in the Hamino direction, there's a config file which just has a FTN, it isn't a make file. And then you run the application. And then the support and the statistics report is output to standard output at the end of the application. Now that reminds me, I think I've set up the example to use perf tools automatically. So um, I'm sorry for that confusion. Okay. Yeah, the comp is script using Perf Tools, but that's okay. We can tell people when they do hands on to use the Perf Tools Lite. Try that. Yes. So this example is using Perf Tools Lite. So if you just want to strip the FTN statement out of the comp file, um, you can just use this. Uh, where you do a module load perf tools light. Um, this has two FTNs. Um, 
but you really only need to do one um, and generate the executable. And then um, now this slurm batch strip will not work at NERSC. Um, but down below, you see what uh, some very important important files here. This is really the statistics directory where um, all the data from instrumenting the code is uh, put. This is the listing file that um, uh, is generated when you use this either rm or h uh, minus h list equal a. Okay, so ignore this fmpi. So this doesn't apply to, I'm sorry about that. I shouldn't, probably shouldn't have shown this slide because it's referring to a different system. Um, okay, so let's skip this <laughs> and go on to, um, okay, so here again, all you do is you go into the tutorial apps directory, go into Hamino, and you can just do a dot slash compit. And that will generate a um, executable that's called Amino X plus um, PAT. And then um, if you do a S batch run in, that will run. And then you will get an output that looks like this. So basically what's happening is uh, Craypat gives you uh, information on what version. And this in fact is running um, a different size problem. Um, no, Helen can help you with account issues. I can, <laughs> but this is running a larger problem um, and it's running a two by two by two, and the actual um, uh, processor measurements are given here. Then it does this rehearsal process that calculates uh, how much time it takes. Um, and then it it executes so it will run in a minute. But we ran it for uh, 50 times and you see that it took 6.467 uh, seconds, um, which is 843 times faster than a Pentium 3. Uh, or 69 gigaflops. Okay. All right, now, this is the profile. If you now do a, if you use perf tools, you have to do a pat underscore build minus, I like to use capital T, and then um, you put in the uh, directory, this thing here, that you will find in the uh, directory that you execute. And this basically gives us a profile with the number of samples. This is a sampling experiment. And sampling is done every hundredth of a second. So this thing runs in eight seconds. Jacoby, which is that one kernel I showed you, takes um, 
75.8% of the time. And the main program actually takes 5%. Now, the et cetera are system routines. Um, and especially things like copy and setting a memory are highly optimized routines that run on the GPU. Um, well, I, excuse me. They actually run on the CPU. They run on the GPU when we get to the GPU part. And then we have MPI. And in this display, um, you only get what uses more than 1% of the time. If you, you want everything, you put a minus capital T in the PAT report. Okay. Now, this is um, with the capital T. And you can see that we have more system routines. We have more uh, MPI. And uh, so we get a little more information. In these, um, this is the number of samples. This is the imbalance. You notice we don't really have too much imbalance at all. And this is the percent of imbalance. Um, and uh, then this is the routine that uses the imbalance. So this is very important when you have an application where um, different processors may be doing different things. For example, let's say that you only do your initialization on one processor, and then you do your calculation in, on all the processors. Okay, then you'll see that in fact, um, the initialization is a hundred, that's right, performance variation over different MPI ranks. Better way of saying it. Okay. Um, now, one thing um, that we also have is the maximum times. Um, this was very important. Um, we had an application once where it wasn't scaling, and it turned out that um, um, there was a very large amount of load imbalance. And typically, all of these numbers in the typical profile are average across all the processors. All right. And then, therefore, you have imbalance. In this, this is the maximum over all processors. And it shows you what processors, actually it's the maximum and minimum. And uh, it shows you which processors are max and min. Okay. Now this is very nice. And this is for the total program. Um, however, you can, uh, there are environment variables you can set to get more information. This is giving us um, the hardware counters via PAPI. And then there are derived metrics. The last six um, rows are derived metrics. The important thing about this is you have a very large percentage of stalls, 80.3% um, of the time you're stalling, waiting for things to happen. And that waiting is typically for memory. Notice that down the second to the last row, 
there's a memory traffic per nominal peak. So you are only getting 7% of available bandwidth. That's very bad. That basically says you're highly bandwidth limited. Okay. All right, now um, it, it also, Perf Tools Lite also gives you information about IO, which is very nice. And then the other thing sampling gives you is it gives you profile on a line number, which is which is nice because that way you you really um, can drill down into a subroutine. Now those line numbers adhere to the compiler loop mark information which is in the .lst file. And there's one of, you can use either one of these options. And basically um, it says a lot of the time is being spent in 2.23. And 2.23 is this statement. All right, so it really is nice. Uh, also, there's, uh, I'll show you this legend in a bit. V means that this loop is vectorized and unrolled by three. That's what the R3 stands for. Okay, so that was the only loop that was optimized. These other three loops don't have any annotation. So they were not optimized. Okay, now if we look at further loop mark information, this is an A. That means that this statement was replaced with a highly optimized memory movement routine. This calls um, sin P was actually inlined. Okay. Now here are the loop mark, uh, mark legends. Probably should have had that earlier in the presentation, but this is at the head of every listing file that you generate. Okay, so let's optimize the code. All right. So what we're going to use is Perf Tools Light Loops. Now you cannot use Perf Tools Light Loops on a OpenMP program because it's instrumenting the loop and it doesn't know the number of threads. And basically what you want it to give you is the average trip count of each of the loops. So what we see here is this is the iteration loop. Um, and it's executed twice. Um, each time it's executed, it, it's executed 30 times. So the loop inside of that, you can tell by the nesting of the free, the nesting of the loop. This is called 60 times, which is 2 times 30. Its average trip count is 255. All right. Then the next inner loop is also 255. And finally, the loop on 221 is 511. And then a little further down, um, you have um, another loop. This is the loop that actually copies WRK into P. And this is 
um, some remaining um, part of that um, report, the way you get the call tree is with the minus OCT on that experiment directory. And here are all the loops. You only get this loop, average loop count, if you use perf tools like loops. It's very important. Okay. So, um, we already talked about this. Now, what we're going to do is use reveal. And to use Reme Reveal, you need a program library. And um, the program library is actually, I think Helen showed it to you, but it's also, this is how you get the program library. With a minus HPL equal some name. Now this enables um, the compiler to do full inner procedural analysis. Now, when you bring up reveal, you're shown a list of the loops ordered by the amount of time they use. Okay. So if I click on the loop that uses well, the loop that uses the most time is the iteration loop, which is um, data dependent. So I can't parallelize that. And so what I do is I pick this loop, this K loop, and I right click and I get scope loop. And once I select that, I basically um, come up with this display, basically saying I want to scope this uh, loop in this function. Um, now I'm going to scope it for the CPU first. The second part um, will work on the GPU. Now, this is um automatically parallelized because it has no undefined. So it has scoped everything private that should be private, shared that should be shared, and it has a reduction uh, function. Conflict basically means that there's a real data dependency and you cannot parallelize it. So this thing automatically parallelizes that loop. And then it inserts the directives. So this is shared memory parallelization. Um, and it uses default none just to show that it has analyzed everything. Okay, and so now I can save this into the original source. Okay. All right, and now remember that the benchmark is memory bandwidth limited. If I increase the number of threads, it's going to just make memory bandwidth limited worse. Okay. Um, and so you're not going to get good performance increase um, with um, OpenMT shared memory. Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, now I'm going to go back and generate the GPU code. 
So I generate the GPU. And now I have some, I still have private. Now I have two from, two from allocate conflict undefined. Now here again, reveal automatically parallelize this for the GPU. And it basically told me what is private, what variables must be copied to the GPU, what variables must be copied from the GPU, and what variables have to be copied to and from the GPU. Allocate is when you, let's say you're in a routine that has automatic arrays, and that array is only used in the GPU. Well, all you really need to do is allocate the array on the GPU and it never has to see the host. Okay, now these are showing you the sizes of the arrays. All right, now here again, we do have the reduction. Now these Gs represent a significant problem. What this is saying is these Gs are in a module or a common block. Okay. And therefore they have to be global. Now, if you have a global that's needed on the GPU, and I'm just about all of these are needed on the GPU, you have to specify that it is an open MP offload, you have to declare it target. In open ACC, you declare it device. Okay, so then we actually have these um, um, open MP offload directives inserted. Um, and um, let's, and now what we see is the initial GPU porting is slower than the two threads. Now, why is GPU execution performing worse? Okay, let's use perf tools like GPU and look at GPU profile. So I, um, and we'll get in more uh, in the second part of the presentation. But let's kind of get to this point it's saying that 77% of the time is spent doing transfers. Then there are copies, and this is the work. These last two lines are where all the work is being done. And all of this is moving data. And this is non-GPU stuff. Okay, so now this is showing you where that those transfers are taking place. And it really is right inside that do loop in Jacoby where it's transferring all of that data that is global. Okay. So now, this 
This is the listing from the GPU. This is the kernel. This, these are the loops. This is the, um, the loop that is spread across the symmetric multiprocessors. This is the loop that is spread across the warps or the wave fronts on A and B. And um, so this is all run on the GPU and it's running very good, but all this data movement is killing us. Now, let me make a point here. This is an iteration loop, right? Do you see in what arrays are actually being set in here? Well, nothing except WRK2. And P is set down below. So you do not have to copy all of these other arrays. Okay. So all arrays are in common blocks. These are globally available. So we need a way to keep them on the GPU all the time. Now, reveal is putting the data transfer inside the iteration loop. It does recognize that P and WRK need to be updated. And then to do the halo exchange, it transfers the entire array when only the boundaries need be exchanged. So let's see how we might optimize that. All right, so the first thing we do is outside, we notice in this small program that A, B, B, and D, C, P, W, R, K, W, R, 2 only need to be put on the accelerator here. Okay, and it encompasses all of the utilization of those arrays. Okay, then we initialize the arrays on the accelerator. So this is in another routine. And in that other routine, we put in the target loop. And we initialize all those arrays on the accelerator. And here is another one. There are two of them in that routine. And now in the Jacobi loop, we only have to move um, WGOSA, and all of these are present on the accelerator. Okay, so let's see how the performance goes. Oh, continuing on, this is the other loop down below where we don't have to do any data movement because everything's on the accelerator. But we do have to send P back to the host for MPI. And then we do a all reduce. So we um, notice that we did send WGOSA back from the device to the host. Okay, so it's it's available for this all reduce. Okay. All right. So this was with all the data transfer. And now this is with the optimization. Now we still have not optimized the um, passing of P and the uh, halo exchange. So what we want to do is avoid copying the P array to do halo swaps. 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go into the um, routine that does the halo exchanges. Um, and we are going to create some buffers. Um, there are actually, um, let's see, one, two, four, probably about 12 buffers for the three dimensions. But once we set up, we allocate these buffers on the accelerator. And we receive into those buffers. We post the receives. Now the sends, we pack up the sends and we send them. But we have to, yes. We have to send these um, buffers to the host to send it. So you post the receives into the um, accelerator buffers, and then you pack you pack the uh, send buffers. You send them. And then you do a wait. I am not showing all the code. Now I do a wait. And once, when those sins come back, then I update the, um, the receives um, to the device. And then I unpack the buffers on the accelerator. Now, here's our profile. We have a little copy here. This is in the initialization routine, which if we run for more time steps will go away. Then these are in fact the Oh, shoot, I can't. Oh, I can't do it. These two weights are waiting for the kernel to finish. All right. So you can see now that, oh, we're about 21% of the time is spent on the accelerator doing the computation. Then we do have a lot of... Um, little sins, this is in the communication. And then there's some copies uh, before the time step loop and after the time step loop. And there are other kernels, uh, primarily in sin and in um, the main routine. Now, there's something that you're very encouraged to, to use, and that is use device pointer. Now, remember um, in the slides I just went through, there were several updates where we had to update the device or update the host. Well, if we use device pointer, we can use the device um, in the MPI calls themselves, both the sends and the receives. So you really do not have to do any target updates. Um, and um, so, this is, you do need, I think we have it here. If not, I have it in there. Yeah, you do have to have this uh, environment variable set. 
but um, this is really kind of now the data is not going through the host at all. It's going directly from the GPU to the interconnect. Okay, so um, this is using the devices now. Really, uh, in another presentation, I ran this at um, a big machine. And as you get larger and larger, the difference between using device pointers and not, uh, that G to G is device pointers. Um, that is really um, a much bigger difference. Okay. Now, there is a very valuable environment there. And that is Cray ACC Debug. There are three levels of verbosity. There's high level overview of kernels executed in data transfer. Uh, then breaking down data transfer by each variable and then the whole kitchen sink. All right, so this is debug equal one. And basically it's telling uh, that it believes 29 items need to be transferred at this uh, line number. But nothing was transferred. And that nothing was transferred because those 29 variables already existed on the GPU. So all of these transfers, um, the compiler computed that they were required and then found that they were present. And this is the kernel execution in the line number. And this is wait, waiting uh, for um, something to finish on line 172. And here's another transfer that wasn't required, et cetera. Now two actually gives you the variable name and the sizes. You might ask, well, how much data do I have on the GPU? Well, you can get it from this. And now three gives you everything. It gives you the upper and lower bound. It gives you the stride. Um, it gives you total memory size. Uh, and it says memory was found in present table. And uh, there are two pointers. There's the pointer for the host, and there's the pointer in the GPU. Okay, and this is running the initial GPU version of um, Amino. And you can see all the data that was transferred to the accelerator and all the data that was transferred back to the host. Okay, and this is the optimized version. And you can see that there's no data transfer. And this is the data in the halo and the halo swaps. Okay, so what have we learned? Perf tools is an excellent is excellent for identifying issues in existing applications, for improving threading, vectorization, 
scalar optimization. Reveal can help with difficult job of scoping variables in potential parallelizable loops. More difficult, if not impossible, with C++. Moving to the GPU is difficult. However, it can be done in steps that are more manageable. Uh, Perf Tools identifies the bottlenecks in the GPU application very quickly. Um, and um, most of the time, it's data movement. And GPU Direct is the best way to do message passing. OK, so this is the end of the first presentation. Um, I think it might be a little bit too early to break. Let's go another 15, 20 minutes. Are there any questions that haven't been answered? They're all answered. OK. All right, I am going to switch presentations. This is a, a series of actually six, six uh, lessons on um, on in the it's um, it's working on Leslie three D, which is is fairly difficult. Okay, so why use offloading? We already went over this. Um, and um, don't need to repeat it. Um, now, there is a, a note about the performance portability. Um, the real situation is we now have NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel all with GPUs. But OpenMP offload is not performance portable across all those. And the reason is NVIDIA stopped at uh, four five. We're at five two. I'm not sure where Intel is, but, but there, we don't have portability, which is very frustrating to me because that's the whole idea on, uh, on these language committees that you really want to encourage portability. And the same thing is the problem with OpenACC. Um, NVIDIA and HPE are not portable. I just spent the last year moving a very large code um, that was NVIDIA OpenACC, and I had to change a very large amount. So we'll get it now. Um, and, and so OpenMP offload uh, really is probably the most portable since every, even IBM has a version. But most parts of Europe are using OpenACC. Um, so I don't want to go. Now, it's very important to kind of follow a set approach. You really need good profiling. And you need to profile a problem you want to run on the GPU, a big problem, um, and run it a long time um, in order to get I mean, you don't want to run a small problem in a, sh a short amount of time because it's going to show that the important things aren't what's really important on the problem you want to run. Um, and then you can start using directives to move kernels to the GPU without worrying about data motion because the compiler will handle that for you, so you can get things running on the GPU. And then once you 
get a large percentage of the computation to the GPU. You look at the call tree and you find a spot where you can move data from the host to the GPU. Um, and in most cases, this is outside this time step loop. And then the hard job is within that data region. Uh, you must either put all the computation on the GPU and or update directives to move data before, between the host and the GPU. And then you start profiling your GPU code. Uh, and yes, make sure to check your answers at each step. Okay. Now that was short. Okay, so this is 401. Now we're going to use on um, uh, my other lessons use Leslie 3D in shared memory. Um, now remember that using the GPU, there are two memory spaces which must be managed by the user. The compiler can help on individual kernels. However, once you start to combine kernels to reduce the redundant data motion, you need to make sure the data is coherent between the two memory spaces. At some time, the two memory spaces will be addressable by both CPU and GPU. This is unified memory. And we're hopeful that Grace Hopper will be the solution for this. But it remains to be seen if you can get the performance that you want out of this capability. OK, so scoping a loop. Now, this is Leslie 3D. This is uh, one of the major loops. Now. Um, the whole idea, of course, is um, we're parallelizing on K. And we want to identify private variables. The loop indices are private. OK, however, things like L are also private, but the compiler, the compiler will automatically make these private but probably not that. And also QSP is set and then used. And QSPI is set and then used. And so those must be private. Now, complications are FSI, because notice that this is independent of K. So each iteration of K needs their own copy of FSI. All right. Now, in order for this not to be a loop carry dependency, you have to make sure that all of the uses of FSI are covered by the sets. Now we're setting zero to IMAX. We're zero, we're using one to IMAX. So this covers that. Uh, one through five is uh, set in this double nested loop or used, set here. Seven is used under the same condition. Um, eight and above is also used under the same condition. However, FSI is passed to this subroutine. 
So we have to look at this subroutine to figure out if FSI it satisfies the criteria for being private. And here's part of the routine. And it turns out that, that VISCI only uses um, one through five or maybe uh, two through five. And it does go from I1 to I2 which is zero to IC max. So that's all good. All right. Um, now we do have a problem with the fact that some of these are in modules. So we'll deal with that later. Now we do have to, when you have a subroutine that is called from a, a kernel, you have to declare it target. In OpenMP, OpenACC, it's declare device. Um, but you have to do that so that the compiler can generate two versions of the routine, one for the CPU, and one for the GPU. Okay. Now, this is in those modules. And so what we've had to do is go in those modules and declare target for the variables that are used in that routine. So what does this do? When the compiler is compiling this module, it is making two copies of those variables, one on the GPU and one on the CPU. Okay, that is very important because automatically, right away, you have to deal with the two memory problem. Okay, and so this is the what reveal generates for the GPU. Now notice it says map always here, map always here. That is because there are these globals and the compiler has no idea if those things are used outside of this do loop. In fact, they are. All right. And so that's what I just said. OK. Now, once we do these kernels, then we look at the looping structures, or excuse me, we look at the profile of the non-GPU version and, and determine which looping structures to put on the GPU, where to consolidate the data transfer. Analyze and make global variables coherent between the host and the GPU. So we really want all the computation on the GPU. So therefore, we want all the computational arrays on the GPU. So on, in this time-stepping algorithm, the best place to build your high-level data region is outside the time stepping loop. This means that all the computation within the time step loop should either be on the GPU and or, or in target updates to move the data. Okay. The whole idea be, behind these lessons is that they're short so people can get an idea, 
can concentrate on a concept. Okay, so let's look at the profile for two. Okay, um, now we want to generate a call tree profile with the instrumentation of the do loops, which is the perf tools light. Now, this is the call loop of Leslie 3D. Um, notice um, this is the time step loop. Then um, this is executed 50 times. And this, for each time step, two passes are made. And then we have three major routines, flux I, flux K, and flux J. They all call a subroutine. And then we have extra K, extra PK, extra PI, and extra PJ that call routines. All right, so everything is a candidate for putting on the GPU. Okay, so um, in a way, this is good. <laughs> okay, so how do we scope uh, a loop that calls um, a subroutine. We actually already did this. Uh, oh, huh. good, I can fix that. Okay. I already showed all those. I already showed that. I already showed that. Okay, this is one of the things where a global value has to be kept consistent. Now, in some other routine, um, these variables are set. And these are variables that are used on the accelerator. So what I have to do is I have to do an update to the accelerator of all of these variables. Yeah. So here again, we have these two memory spaces. Are and on the right slide? go on. Uh, uh, the slide that I see, it says additional lessons covering GPU parallelism right now. Huh. We should be on 4.2, so you're not seeing this. No, I'm seeing slide 10 in your 4 and 4.1. Yeah, same here. Can we stop oh, share, try reshare? You know what I might do is if I'm... I see, I see the mouse. Are you using multiple screens? or? Yeah, I am. Yeah, that's one thing. Just you got to be careful sometimes what screen you're sharing. Yeah. I've had that problem I before, see, too. I don't see your screen update. I don't... Okay. Does that help? No, yeah. there's no sl slides. Now there's no slides. But at no. least I got this back. Yeah, that looks right. All right. I'm sorry. But at least there were a lot of repetition there. So. Actually, this is a good place to take a break. Um, let me, well, wait. Let me see if this. Yeah. Um, no, I already covered that.
Yes, this is a good place to take a break. I'm just, I want to show you things that are available to help you do some of the difficult tasks. Um, and that is optimizing data movement, which Reveal doesn't help you with. Uh, Reveal helps you put in the directives, which is very, very nice. Uh, but then th this tries to address optimizing the data motion. And the whole idea is you want to generate a data region where you move the data that's needed to perform the kernels to the GPU at a higher level than the kernel. Now, one of the things that helps you a lot is when you use this list equal A, at the end of the routine, you will get the names of the variables and how they're used in the kernel. For example, these are copied in. In other words, they're only read. Um, this is copied in and copied out. And then you might also have a copy out. So what this does is this gives you the name, names of the variables. And what, what you do is you look at all the kernels within this expanded data region. And then you create a data, data region with these names in it. Um, there are people who actually write a preprocessor that pulls these things off. Okay, so basically what we did on Leslie 3D is this is the time step loop. All right. And from looking at all the data, all of the kernels within the time step loop, were basically moved up to outside of the time step loop. Now this is saying map it to and from. In other words, you're gonna map all these to the accelerator and then return it to the host after um, the time step loop. All right, now you have to be aware of these things that I mentioned is you now are, are responsible for making sure that these two copies of the data are consistent. And the problem here is there are these variables that exist both on the host and on the GPU. And so basically what happens is, remember, there's two iterations of this uh, time step loop. Well, these things change. So um, these values change on the host. And so what we have to do is update the device with those values. Okay, this is another one where we hadn't um, um, put on the accelerator before, but since it uses accelerator data, we definitely want to put it on the accelerator. All right, now this is the call that um, actually does the halo exchange. Now, the first step that I did was just move the arrays before, move them to the host before this, and move them back to the accelerator after, and get everything else working, and then go into the halo regions. And, um, and that's where 
um, we generate these um, message passing buffers. And um, so all of the um, use of the variables within this uh, MPI is uh, being done on the accelerator. Now there is an argument change. That's what this is saying is Q is being passed, but var is um, is the name of the variable in this routine. And where whenever you use this use device pointer, that's so that um, you you don't have to do your updates. You need this environment variable. Um, and so as you can see, these are all device arrays. And um, the you just you can just put those into the MPI calls and they actually um, use the uh, GPU data. And this is um, packing a buffer and then sending it. These are doing the receives of, of buffers. And then once those buffers are received, then you unpack the buffer into the variable. So let's uh, get this. Last presentation. Okay, and now we're gonna do a little optimization. And this is where I really wanna use perk tools because it gives you much, much better uh, analysis. Um, whereas perf tools light GPU groups all of these copies together. Um, and um, so this is um, actually before we optimize um, oh, yeah, this. So this is another one where in the actual code, we didn't um, address this particular loop in analysis. And it uses U and Q. All right, so we added that and um, So what we want to do is we want to get all these weights up at the top and we want the copies to be low. Now we are, do expect to get a lot of copies in the halo exchanges, um, but they shouldn't add up to be very much. Now there's another thing that we looked at the compiler listing and the compiler is actually blocking automatically these loops. 
And we don't want it to do that on the GPU because this results in shorter loops. And so we put in a non-blocking uh, to um, keep that from happening. So that's that's all my slides. I haven't gotten to the next lesson yet. So let's entertain some questions. If there are anyone left. Stop share. Question about when they do the comp ed, they're getting um, messages about program, blah, 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 that is already instrumented with Perf Tools. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That has to do with using Perf Tools Lite in Perf Tools both. And to, to how to deal with this, delete subdirectories and redo it? Yeah, you should only use just until you get to the GPU, just use Perf Tools Lite in Perf Tools Lite loops. Yeah, so that's GPU version only works for the, the full Perf Tools module. No, Perf Tools works for everything. But it's uh, hard. No, I mean, what I'm saying for GPU, you have to use the full Perf tools. That's what I mean. Yes. The, the light to loops, the light, not anything doesn't yeah. work. Okay. Perf tools light GPU gives you um, correct information. It's just not helpful. I like to see each of the, the time taken by each of the copies. Not a combined amount. They tend to aggregate all the copies into one, one thing. Is the ultimate goal for this is to be able the the reviews tool helps you to scope and insert directives for GPU. Yes. Mm -hmm. 